We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how can birth and death leave suffering and attain bliss and quickly realize non-birth. Kung din dai du tang hung tin vi thu pha hoi kam nhak thi hiếp chung san Tịnh chuyến diệu phạm lưng nhau đau ngã âm hùng Như há liệu sanh thoát tư vi khô đạc là Tớ chứng vô sanh how much of a blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Nambo Sadanto Suche Do Ye Alahudi San Miao San Puto Se. Nambo Tarakta to Ya Raja Alahade Tamil Tambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Oh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, great master, six patriarch, great master, Shenhua, all good monks and nuns, and all good no advisors, Amitofo. Chufo Pusan, Liu Tzu, Shifu Shangren, Go Wei, Chu Charen, Go Wei, Shang Chu Shi, Amitofo. Chifo Pusan, Kun Tu, Luk Tho, Hoa Thuong, Tiên Hoa, Quý Thầy Cô, Và Kê Vị Tĩnh, Sức Sức, A Nhi Đà Phật. Hello, everyone. Today is the 10th of December, 2022. Uh, we are here at uh, Dharma Chaitri Temple to begin discussing the third chapter of the Six Patriarch Sutra. Mm. All right. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we are on the very first slide. This chapter is about doubts and questions. Uh, let's, oh, thank you very much. Let's go right into it. Mm. Uh, sutra text. One day, Magistrate Wei arranged a great vegetarian feast in the Master's honor. After the meal, the Magistrate asked the Master to ascend to his seat. 一日,为自始为,施舍大会斋,斋气,自始请施身坐。Okay, so one day, magistrate Wei, who is a more or less magistrate, I believe back then magistrate is like a a, provincial, a a state governor kind of level, a power, um, influence. So he's a very high-ranking official, you will. He, uh, he's a follower of Master Huineng. 
he arranged a, a, a big vegetarian feast in a master's honor. Uh, uh, so there's a vegetarian feast, lots of people were invited, and uh, according to Master Shinhua, uh, we're doing fundraising to add more buildings. <laughs> And uh, I don't know why they bother doing fundraising. It's just uh, confiscate your money. <laughs> what are you gonna? What are you gonna do? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so he he uh, he uh, after the meal, the magistrate asked the master to ascend to the to his seat. So the so after the feast, uh, they. At the time, they arranged for him to have a, a, to speak Dharma, which is uh, the tradition of uh, the Buddhist tradition. When you're invited to eat, you're supposed to speak the Dharma. Uh, in particular, uh, it's kind of funny that uh, that means that you know, the the uh, great master could not eat uh, that much because uh, you don't want to fall asleep. <laughs> so lots of pressure. Uh, so uh, uh, five together with official scholars and the assembly, he bowed reverently and asked. 从官僚叙述,素容再拜,问曰。All right. So, not only was he bowing, but he insisted that his uh, officials and the scholars and everyone in the assembly, uh, that they all bow to the great master. Okay. Uh, and then he knelt on his uh, knees and put his palms together and ask the question. Mm. And you see here, uh, there is a connotation here, and the implication here is that this, uh, this uh, magistrate weight had, uh, had wisdom. He, had, he understands the protocol. Not only did he understand the protocol, he also understood as a great opportunity for everyone to bow to the great master. Bowing in Buddhism is a form of offering. And therefore, when you have a great, you see a, a great monk, a Sangha member, you want to bow because that's at the bowing there is actually an offering to the triple jewel. And so it's a, it's a big deal. So that's why Magistrate Wei insisted that they bowed to the great master. Seventh, a disciple has heard the high master explain the Dharma. It is truly inconceivable. I now have a few doubts and hope you will be compassionate and resolve them for me. 弟子闻和尚说法,实不可思议,经有少疑,愿大慈悲,特为解说。Alright, commentary slide on 8. Uh, okay, uh, there's no your disciple. I don't know how your disciple, maybe it was older slide, so I'm going to correct it, because I'm the only one who can correct it here, I'm told. Okay, so he said, disciple has heard, the high master explained the Dharma. So magistrate Wei, in, in addition to his very, as you can imagine, very busy schedule, uh, he uh, often attended the master's uh, lectures and and uh, so, which is, uh, which is uh, pretty remarkable. It shows, uh, shows this, uh, this uh, magistrate way here is very, very sincere. And he heard the high master. So, uh, high master, uh, he says here, you see, uh, he recognized him as a high master, whereas in Buddhism, uh, you usually have to go through 
typically the uh, Dharma age is to be recognized as a high master. So this is an exception. In Buddhism, always uh, the rules and exceptions. Uh, and, and so, uh, and he says, this uh, um, disciple feels that, that what the Dharma and the master explain is truly inconceivable. Uh, inconceivable meaning that uh, you cannot possibly understand uh, with, with the mind, with your thinking mind. Number nine, commentary. I now have a few doubts and hope you will be compassionate and resolve them for me. Uh, and so when you listen to the Dharma, uh, if you listen to the Dharma, uh, you will have some questions and doubts. And therefore, he would, he, uh, Maybe during, in the past, when the Dharma spoke, uh, was spoken, you're not supposed to interrupt the uh, speech. But he, uh, but he says, uh, but in his, in his case, he listened to the Dharma and felt he couldn't have a chance to ask the questions. Uh, so he says, now that you're speaking Dharma, I, I'd like to have a chance to uh, have my doubts dispelled. I hope you be compassionate uh, enough to do it for me. Okay, and so again, here is another aspect of the cultivation. When you listen to Dharma, you're going to have questions, you're going to have doubts, and therefore, it is reasonable for us to expect you to ask questions. Okay. Uh, in America, in our times, we are a lot more loose, a lot more relaxed, a lot more casual. Therefore, we encourage you to feel free to ask questions anytime. Mm. Uh, but back then, it's so formal. It is that the, the uh, Dharma, the Buddha Dharma being spoken is such a big deal that there's a there's a, you, uh, you, don't, uh, you can't casually ask questions. You have to, uh, and the advantage of that is that if you cannot simply blurt out your questions, then uh, you have to think it through and, and wait for the appropriate time to ask questions. Uh, so your questions are a lot more thoughtful. So some real advantage is there, okay? Uh, and, uh, and so always there also, there are some disadvantages. Mm. That is, uh, the real advantage is that now your questions are better formulated, are more thoughtful, and you have time to do your research and discuss with your friends and your, uh, and your teachers and so forth. So they're more meaningful uh, for many more people. But the... Uh, the, I feel the advantage of being able to spontaneously ask questions mm, to me far outweigh the outweigh the um, the um, the having to wait to ask the questions. Okay, uh, I like spontaneity. I like uh, especially in a child environment. Uh, we, if you have uh, anything, any doubts, any problems, you should bring them up so that they get resolved, so that you can drop, drop them, so that they don't wait on your mind anymore. So that's my preference. Mm. All right. So my master's temples, they. Uh, I don't know what happened during Master Xinhua's uh, live lectures. Uh, I believe that towards the end, when I attended his uh, Dharma talks, they also, I didn't see anyone asking any questions live when he was speaking a Dharma. Uh, they would wait until the end of the lecture after he died to give you a time uh, slot to ask questions, which to me, it's um, overdue. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it. I like, uh, if you have any sorts of questions, uh, any sorts of uh, 
problems should be resolved right away so that, uh, uh, so that your mind is free and clear, and so that you can concentrate on the listening part. So anyway, so here, traditionally, as per, uh, as uh, indicated here uh, by uh, this, in this sutra, uh, there is, uh, you, you could not um, ask uh, questions spontaneously back then, okay? Uh, so what's your preference? You want to... Uh, Ass uh, and shoot from the hip, or you rather wait and and uh, formulate the questions and on a formal occasion and ask. No problem. Okay, I can see that. Okay, seven. <laughs> um. I like shoot, shooting from the hip. Mm. Okay. Uh, Way Mountain. Thank you, Master. I'm very grateful that you went through your own personal experience uh, where you experienced waiting till the end to ask questions so you could arrive at this style so I didn't have to ask for it. It feels very natural and it feels like a more powerful way a more confident way of delivering the Dharma. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I feel so too, because I was frustrated. I was really frustrated, you know, you, I used to sit there for an hour and a half, the lecture is an hour and a half, uh, and uh, the questions pop in your mind as you listen to them speak, but you can't uh, ask, so you have to write them down. So it forced me to have, forced you to prepare to have a pen, or we didn't have a, a, a cell phone back then. You need to have a pen, and then, and then, uh, and then, if you write it down, then you miss out on the lecture, on the talk itself. So it's, it's some real drawbacks, okay, in having to wait, way bound. Oh, hi, thank you, Master. I think you just addressed my question. I was saying that questions would pop up in my mind during the lecture, and it's nice to be able to ask them at the time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Otherwise, you you forget. Uh, and the worst part for me is that I didn't mind waiting, uh, but in the end, when you ask questions, uh, the. Uh, didn't give you enough time to ask questions, nor did they give you any real answers. Okay, uh, which is disappointing to me. Mm. Mm. We'll have a hard time catching on that kind of dharma. We we'll have a hard time catching on with the uh, Western educated uh, audiences. All right, Way Mountain. Thank you, Master. Also, I feel like it's more in line with the sudden teaching uh, technique because uh, I hope one day as you're lecturing, uh, someone can ask a question and then by hearing your answer, they can become suddenly enlightened. Well, I hope so, that too. I hope so too. They don't have to wait, you know. Maybe I hope yeah. I be sudden, uh, I reach sudden enlightenment myself. Hearing the question, <laughs> why not? <laughs> okay, uh, answer from JMT. 네, 아, 안녕하세요, 마스터. 어, 바로 궁금증을 질문하고 해결을 해 주셔서 어, 생각을 바로 바로 내려 내려놓을 수 있었고. 그 다음에 저의 긴 질문 그런 것들을 통역해 주시고 어, 대답해 주셔서 감사드립니다. What happened? She still has two more for, uh, sentences. 어떻게 질문을 긴 질문밖에 되지 않나요? 
Uh, sir, I can ask you uh, spontaneously, can, and then I can answer right, right, now, right away. So I can put down my thinking. And then thank you for answering my long question. You're welcome. Well, thank you for asking your long questions. Uh, a good exercise, good drills for us. <laughs> And also, one thing I need to confess to you, that uh, I have this problem. As soon as I speak, uh, I'm, I'm done speaking, I forget why I just spoke. <laughs> so, if you have to wait until the end and ask me, when you said that, I said, did I say that, really? <laughs> it causes problems for me to have to reprocess it. What made me say that, you know? <laughs> You too. From DTT Daniel, he prefers shoot from the hip so that master can show how, show us how stupid we are, and it's like a one on one sudden teaching to interact with master. Hmm. Okay. So it's all positive, nothing negative, really. <laughs> okay. You clearly are biased. Usually you. Sh at least one of you should be tend to say, no, nah, I don't want it. <laughs> so that we present, you know, to have a, a semblance, a balance of opinions instead of just a, a group thinking. You go ahead, JC. Ah, uh, hello. Hello, this is XA from JC. How are you? Yes, I still am very you glad to hear you again. <laughs> I was yelling at her Master, recently. <laughs> Master, I think asking spontaneously has a very good benefit because we are we we practice to be straightforward. Uh, we don't have the time to think how to ask the right questions. Um, how to be more polite, I think it has a lot of advantages to be able to ask uh, spontaneous questions. But that in itself, isn't that a contradiction in terms? Because you Koreans are not spontaneous. You always are polite. Polite people cannot be spontaneous, in my opinion. <laughs> That's why it's very afflicting and it's very beneficial. <laughs> Affliction is body. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, so no one is against it. Again, you pretend to be against it just for once. <laughs> 10. The Master said, if you have any doubts, please ask and I will explain. The Honorable Wait said, what the Master speaks, isn't it the same as the doctrine of great Master Bodhidharma? <laughs> 吴当为说,伟公曰,和尚所说,可不是达摩大师宗旨乎? Okay, 11. Commentary. The Master said, if you have any question, any, any, uh, uh, if you have any doubt, then immediately ask, is the Chinese actually uh, text says. Immediately ask. I rest my case. Okay, exactly. Somebody said earlier uh, that's the nature of the teaching. Uh, you have to strike the iron when it's still hot. So that's why you don't want to wait. Okay. Uh, so the G one here is very important to me. It, it's uh, critical and and. Um, uh, it somehow got lost in the Mahayana translation. So, uh, if you have uh, doubts, uh, you should ask immediately. That should be the correction. Okay? We should correct the text because I want to put emphasis here on that you immediately ask. Okay, and that's how the Dharma, the certain teaching Dharma is taught and is practiced. You have 
you have any questions, any thought pops up, spit it out. Do not let it weigh you down. Do not carry any baggage. Okay? It's not about being right or wrong. It's about, it's about learning together. Okay? Uh, so, uh, do I need to correct this? Or can you, someone make a, a, a note and correct it later? Because if I have to correct it, Yes. Can't hear you. It's already corrected. Where? Oh, I need to update, you mean? Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, both? Okay, so please uh, immediately ask, ask immediately uh, so that uh, so that I can explain. Hmm? Can we make it more, more polite, just for the Koreans? <laughs> Actually, you said, if you have any doubts, you should ask immediately, is the proper translation. And I, uh, uh, so that I can explain to you. That should be a translation. I feel it's a lot stronger, it's proactive, and exactly with the, sp with the spirit of, um, of Chan, teaching Chan. Okay, uh, are you making correction now or? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you're too fast for me. <laughs> okay, so that's reflected, that's updated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Mm. Uh, can I explain for you, not to you? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, not to you. It's for you. I'm doing you a favor, basically. And it's for you, not for her. It's for you. If you dare ask, I will explain for you. I mean, I will insult you, I will beat you up, and whatever, but it's for you only. <laughs> it makes sense now? And, you, and then you regret it. You will never dare ask again. <laughs> For you, yeah, there you go. Uh, there's a humor here, and, and uh, I think I think Master uh, Huineng, I think that's how he would. That's how, what he meant. So the Honorable Wei said, Wei uh, said, uh, what the Master speaks, the Da, uh, what uh, meaning what the Dharma that the Master speaks, isn't that the same? Uh, Doctrine as great master Bodhidharma. So he's, see, he's a magistrate. So he sets you up, you know, before he will, 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 will kill you, okay? <laughs> so he said, we're talking about the standards of great master Bodhidharma, okay? See, is that, is that, is that right? He said, of course. <laughs> How can you say no? Okay. And the master said, yeah, it is. <laughs> Immediately. Okay, yeah, of course. Uh, 14. Mm. The magistrate asked, Disciple has heard that when Bodhidharma first instructed the Emperor Wu of Liang, the Emperor asked him, All my life I have built temples, given sanction to the Sangha, practiced giving, and arranged Vegetarian feasts. Gong Yue, Di Zi Wen, Da Mo Chu Hua Liang Wu Di, Di Wen Yun, Zhen Yi Shen, Zhao Si Du Sen, Bu Shi She Jai. Okay, very good. Fifteen. Mm. Uh, so, 
Oh, so now he says, uh, so now I'm, I'm going to qu- ask about this, uh, the, the, entertain- the teaching uh, uh, that uh, Bodhidharma gave to uh, Emperor Wu of the Yang Dynasty. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Who said that, he, he said that uh, he built a, uh, uh, for his entire life, he's very supportive of the Buddha Dharma. Uh, he built temples and supported Sangha to practice uh, their, their, their cultivation. Uh, he practiced giving, he did a lot of charity work and a lot of giving, and offered uh, a vegetarian, vegetarian feast uh, to the uh, Dharma masters and so forth. And so I did a lot of uh, uh, Good things for Buddhism. Okay? Mm. Mm. And continue, 16. What merit and virtue have I gained? Bodhidharma said. In fact, there was no merit and virtue. Disciple has not yet understood this principle and hope that the High Master will explain it. Mm. Okay, yes, Wei Mang. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, following up on my observation from yesterday's lecture, uh, I would like to point out that the magistrate offered vegetarian feasts. He did not offer uh, a feast of edible fruit arrangements or fruit cocktails. So I applaud the magistrate's choice of vegetables and want to just uh, advocate for every opportunity that vegetables be pointed out as a reward. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, you better talk to, to uh, 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 you better talk to our kitchen staff. It's the kitchen manager who encourages these things, okay? We don't talk about it during lectures. It's sort of like uh, climbing on conditions. I know. You know what I mean? It's like uh, you uh, pale-faced people don't understand the concept. <laughs> you don't take advantage of you know, doing lectures and and uh, hint that you know, the kind of food offering they should bring to the temple. And that's uh, climbing on conditions. Okay. Good intentions, but uh, uh, badly uh, executed. <laughs> okay, uh, so so uh, uh, so, Bodhi, great master Bodhidharma said, uh, actually, there's no merit in virtue at all. And so magistrate, in any way, said, that doesn't make sense to me. Would you please uh, explain it for me? Okay. 18. Do not mistake blessings for merit and virtue. Merit and virtue are in the Dharma body, not in the cultivation of blessings. 不可将福变为功德。功德在法身中不再修福 mm. So the answer came right back at him. He says, you making a mistake. Hmm? Uh, merit and virtue uh, is in the Dharma body, uh, not in planting blessings. Okay, and he will elaborate. Okay, uh, and you see the way he explained merit and virtue is quite different from from uh, from uh, the typical answers from the monks and nuns. It's fascinating. Uh, Wei Maun. Master, I have a question in regards to the Vietnamese translation. Um, I know that English is very precise when they say do not mistake, but the Vietnamese they say không thể lấy. Is that okay to change it to uh, đừng có sai lầm, lấy phước làm uh, công đức? Mm. 
I think you should soften it uh, by saying uh, không nên hiểu lầm. Okay? Because the Vietnamese is very sensitive. You don't want to insult them. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, this master has no manners whatsoever. <laughs> uh, all right? Uh, okay. Uh, very good. Feel free to ask questions, okay? I don't, my Vietnamese is horrible, but I, I think I can help you understand the intention of the Dharma. Um, and you can then, then fine tune it using your own words. Uh, all right. So he says, uh, so uh, there's a difference. Uh, your understanding of merit and virtue uh, is wrong. Okay, totally wrong. 20. The master said further, seeing the nature is merit and equanimity is virtue. To be an obstructed in thought after thought. Constantly seeing the true, real, wonderful function of your original nature is called merit and virtue. 诗有曰,见性是功,平等是德,念念无智,常见本性,真实妙用,名为功德. Okay, very good. So, uh, he elaborates, elaborates. 21. Seeing a nature is merit and equanimity is virtue. Okay. Uh, so he defines in uh, merit as seeing the nature. Seeing nature uh, refers to the act that uh, the act of of uh, of uh, what enlightened people do. They see the nature, that's how they become enlightened. Okay? They connect with the nature. They're able to, to uh, finally go home and connect with their Buddha nature. Nature here is Buddha nature. So to be able to do that is to create merit. Okay? And equanimity is virtue. Equanimity is to see everything equally. No high or low. No black or white. No gains or losses. Okay? That is virtue. Non-discrimination. 22. Unobstructed in thought after thought, constantly seeing the true, real, wonderful function of your original nature is called merit and virtue. Yes, go ahead, uh, go for us. Then if, if so, is the virtue similar to compassion or same to compassion? Huh? Are you talking to us? Let's go to go force. Thank you, Sufu. Um, may I please have a comment? Does that mean the the great general who invite the sangha uh, to the have the feast, he's still attached? Because you have been teaching us that when you donate or do something, you just drop it, because his his he's still attached and his to his ego that. I do something so I should get something back, not because of his nature that he just want to to donate or um, like he, he always asks for something instead of the true nature of giving. That's when you give and then that's it, you drop. Uh, no, this is not refer to magistrate weight. He's referring to why did Bodhidharma <laughs> uh, tell the emperor that he had no merit and virtue at all. When he helped build temples and he helped uh, propagate Buddhism throughout China, and uh, he ended up with no merit and virtue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. 
that's what what the magistrate Wade was uh, was uh, was um, questioning that he couldn't understand it. Why? Why not? Okay, it's not uh, about him. He's talk about the teaching from Great Master Bodhidharma. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Conk. So, Master, is 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 virtue? Um, is virtue? If virtue is like that, is virtue same as compassion, or like uh, virtue is a seed of compassion, something like that? I would tell you right now that I would not dare deviate from Master uh, Hui Neng's uh, teaching right now, because uh, you are changing the contents of the virtues and the merit he's talking about. I'll be honest with you. Uh, what he talked about is very advanced. So we don't need to add anything more beyond that. You know, that's not muddied with compassion and all kinds of things. Let's stick to what he just said. Okay? It would be easier to try to add more dimension to it when we don't understand it yet quite really understand it 100% would, uh, would uh, leave a lot of holes, you know, and more holes in our understanding and gives us the, the false uh, sense of complacency that we, we got it. I would tell you right now, uh, what he talked about is, uh, I don't understand f totally. So let's try to understand it together. How is that? Hmm? No. Because the way he explained is not the typical thing. And he goes back to the self-nature. And uh, I struggle with how I'm going to explain the self-nature to you. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping you're not going to ask me. <laughs> because you ask, I went, oh. <laughs> okay? So I, you know, if it, and then she wants me to include compassion in it and say, oh, I'm, I'm struggling already with his answers. And that's not... Uh, Compound my problem, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, not yet. Okay, hold that question when uh, someday uh, I become enlightened and I will answer you. We uh, mountain question. Thank you, Master. Oh, it's you uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, not to ask you the question that you don't don't want me to ask, um, but the theme from last night comes up again for me. Um, not fruit. Uh, that there was an, a, a a circumstance where something was explained, but the how part was missing. And what what I'm hearing the magistrate ask, and then Bodhidharma re respond with. Forgive me, I'm trying to follow along is he's defining what merit and virtue are, but those definitions I'm hearing are very advanced, and I don't understand at all how you would do those things. Like, how do you see your nature? How do you... I know I just asked the question, I'm sorry. But mm -hmm. that was really what came to mind, and in the spirit of your immediate question concept, I, I thought I'd... I told you already. I was sitting and listening and sitting here and listening to translation and I was wondering how I'm going to explain to you what he talked about. Why are you asking the same thing again? <laughs> the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I, I wanted to express my solidarity. I don't want to sound defensive, but I don't know. <laughs> so, it sounds, so it's not just me that he's... Maybe in another slide soon to come, he will provide more insights. So I, I yes, I hate to it will. Ask the he will be clear. The point here is this: mm. when you listen to the Buddha Dharma, uh, there will be often, especially when you uh, attend Mahayana lectures, you will find yourself uh, not being able to understand. 
It's a lot more often that people are willing to admit. It's a lot of it is just, just way beyond us. And that's the wonderful thing about Mahayana lecture is that you're not supposed to understand. That's a genius of the teacher. He's telling you things that you cannot possibly imagine about you, about the universe, that mankind will never be able to figure it out on their own. Okay? And if you, under, you, you take it uh, from that, that perspective, then you realize that there's no way you can understand. We cannot understand possibly everything he talked about. Okay? So all we can do, and I looked out in that sense because I could not ask my master. If he was alive and, and he was lecturing like this, I would uh, be quiet for the first four years, but the fifth year I say, oh, I've been here four years, master, I ain't got nothing yet. <laughs> can I ask you a question? <laughs> Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't have, I don't want to waste the rest of my life <laughs> listening, you know, sitting here, okay? Uh, but unfortunately for me, I couldn't ask him questions. So I was forced to simply shelve it. And what would, in, in the folder called, doubts, unresolved issues. And, and they're quite a big folder, okay? There's so many of them. And, and that's how I was trained. And it turns out this is exactly happening to you as well. Because, because I jokingly said, I don't know how to explain it to you because, of course, if I explain it to you, you still don't get it. It's nothing to understand. Remember? When he talked about seeing in nature, uh, Seeing nature is an act. The act of seeing your nature is not an understanding. You notice that? So he's referring to, to, uh, to create merit is to see. Seeing your nature is to create merit. That's all. And, and since we don't understand, you don't understand, so all we have to do, all we can do is just memorize it. Say, okay, seeing a nature is merit, and shelve it. Because even if I try to explain it to you, you still won't get it, because you cannot see the nature. How can you possibly understand that seeing a nature is merit? For those who are able to see the nature, they don't understand why seeing nature is merit themselves. Yes, ma'am. Nine. Uh, my thoughts here is that, uh, Master, you explained uh, the way you explain Mary and the virtual in the Chai Handbook and in some other previous Dharma talks is Mary and virtual is the inner goodness. It's the, versus the blessing is the visible part, and then the Mary and virtual is um, invisible. And then it's basically the goodness. So I guess if you can see your self-nature, everything you do is goodness. That's why you have Mary and virtual. Is that right? No, it's not that simple. <laughs> uh, we're talking about something you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so, so, I can't explain it to you. Whatever you think you understand uh, is not what it is. And that's the first problem. Second problem, I cannot understand to explain to you what the saying the nature is. Okay, and therefore, how can I possibly connect merit with 
that or with goodness. Okay, and what the typical Dharma masters, or, uh, uh, masters, Buddhist masters explain merit and virtue is for low level people, if you will. My master Huyen explained it is very, very high level, and therefore uh, all we can do is to shelve it. And, uh, and, and, and uh, hope that someday we understand, okay? Uh, and that's the nature of Buddhist practices. You don't have to understand everything. Just know that it is a, a tremendous uh, gift for us to be able to hear his teachings, okay? And it's meant to be that in the future, someday we understand it. And that's fantastic in itself. It's a challenge. It's someday, right now you don't, but someday you will. Have faith that you will. And that's part of the teaching, folks. What are we talking about? You cannot understand. Not now, not tomorrow, not next year. That's for sure. Okay? Most likely not in the next 10 years. Unlikely. Okay? Uh, so, mm, that's how profound it is. And therefore, therefore, all we can do is accept it and say it came from the mouth of a great master who has tremendous wisdom they can we cannot possibly fathom as a gift okay he gave it to us expecting that we don't understand he knew very well that magistrate Wade could not understand his answer anyway he gave the answer anyway and for, let me tell you, spell it out for you right now, uh, for the specific hope that will develop magistrates' weights, faith, to help it grow deeper. Because that's how Mahayana works. Okay? Uh, he said, Mahayana is like a vast ocean. The only way you can enter is through faith. Right there. And this is how it's being enforced. It's how it's being encouraged. <laughs> By giving you this, this, uh, this priceless gift you don't appreciate what it really is like, but you give it to you anyway. And if you are willing to just shelve it, your faith will grow and grow and grow in time. That's my experience. The only thing that you can understand right now, or next 10 years, it's very, very shallow. That's your limitations. Does it help? Go ahead, Kong. 네, 입체님 질문입니다. 자비도 진전에 도움이 되나요? Is compassion helpful for progression? Yes, very helpful. However, compassion is an aid before you become enlightened. It will help you build a proper foundation. But after you become enlightened, compassion becomes 
a key ingredient for you to become a Buddha. It's no longer an aid after you become enlightened, but compassion needs to be nurtured, needs to be grown, needs to grow bigger uh, so that you can become a Buddha. So after you become enlightened, now, now then you really have to work on your compassion. Okay? It's so much more important. That's why after they're enlightened, what do bodhisattvas do? They come to our world to work on their compassion. Work on their great compassion. All right? Hmm. Good question. All right. So he says here, uh, okay. uh, so if you are unobstructed in thought after thought, what is he referring to? Let me give you a flavor, explain it to you in a way that you will make it easier for you to understand, meaning that thought after thought, you are not, you are not obstructed. What does it mean? What is obstructing? When you have a thought, what is the nature of the obstruction when you have a thought? Yes, nine. Afflictions. Afflictions, okay, very good. You have a thought, you have a thought arises, you meditate, you have a thought arises, you get afflicted. Or you're eating, a thought arises, you're afflicted. Yes, that's an obstruction because it stops you from continuing what you're doing. It distracts you. It stops you from focusing on your task. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, so he says, if uh, whatever thought arises, you see right here, he says, if whatever thought arises in your, in your head, uh, you are you are oblivious to it. Right? Constantly seeing the true, real, wonderful function of your original nature. Again, you don't know what he's talking about. No way you know what he's talking about. He's referring again, he's, he's addressing the, the, the top tier of his audience. Okay, uh, and and that's and that's uh, that's why that's why you understand that we are not the target audience, and that's why all we can do is shelve it, memorize it, shelve it, and in the future when we get there, then it, it, it will come to light to us, for us. All right, and that's all you can do. On the other hand, what if? But if you, you say, no, this is too much for me, I'm bored to death, I, you know, uh, this is nonsense, this is Saturday night in the United States, I don't have time to waste, I'd rather go uh, have some, some uh, a good time with my friend, my family. It's almost Christmas time anyway, so what am I doing here? I mean, it's not a good use of my time. You can't you sit there and you complain, complain, complain. Okay. That's a proof that you're not constantly seeing the true, real, wonderful function of your original nature. <laughs> okay, so uh, what's referring to is uh, your nature uh, is true, okay? It has, you know, when these people who are enlightened, there are they understand the truth. They don't feel the need to mislead you anymore. They don't need to cheat or lie to you anymore. Okay? Uh, real, meaning whatever they do, okay, is constructive for you. Okay? And because they understand uh, that the truth here is that they're not attached to anything. Real is real to you. Okay, so 
It's a middle way. They're not attached, but they still do things for you. Because it's for your sake. Call it compassion. Call it whatever. Okay? But that's why it's always true and real. Does it help a little bit? Okay? Uh, and, and he's talking about, about enlightened people. And the wonderful function of your original nature, uh, you know, the, the, the nature has uh, is, uh, something called, called a wonderful function. It can, does, uh, it can pull off miraculous things that you can hear and you can read about in the sutras. Okay? There's the miracles we talked about, whether it's spiritual penetrations or uh, the uh, miraculous events that were documented in the sutras and in, in the Buddhist uh, uh, scriptures. Okay, and those are called wonderful function of your nature. We have miracles, but we don't make a big deal of it. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be enjoyed and appreciated privately, not used for fundraising. All right? Mm. It's called merit and virtue. All right? Uh, 23. Inner humility is merit, and the outer practice of reverence is virtue. Your self-nature establishing the 10,000 dharmas is merit, and the mind substance separate from thought is virtue. 内心天下是功,外形与理是德,自信建立万法是功,心体理念是德. Okay, and now here you appreciate uh, the, his wisdom here. He says, I know I lost you already. <laughs> but boys and girls, hey, hey, don't leave yet. <laughs> Let me explain to you in a way you can understand a little bit. Uh, you need to be humble inside. That's merit. He said, ah, that, I, I, I get that. Okay, it, it, do you see the humor here? It's so beautiful. He's, he lost us completely. He lost me. And he says, he says oh, no, sure, I thought of a thought. I can't do that. <laughs> and seeing a true, real, wonderful, I explained to you, but you, I, I assure you, most people who read this would not understand what it really means, what is true, what is true, what is wonderful. You have no idea. So he says, huh? Huh? And that's why he said, you know, he said, he immediately, you see, the beautiful, the teaching is very balanced. Hmm? He says, this is, this is the essence of it, but this is how you get there. It's so clever. Hmm. So he says, hmm, um, this is similar. Now he is similar to the level that uh, the Chinese uh, Dharma masters say merit is to do something to benefit others. It's merit. Okay? And so he's saying, he's saying let me tell you, uh, it's not just that. Uh, that is for low level people. Let me tell you, your Buddha nature is very humble. The fact that you're a humble person, the state of being humble is to create merit. It sounds like you understand, but he's still talking pretty high level. <laughs> That's why it's so clever. Thai said, wow, this is too much. Can I go back to my video game? <laughs> so everyone understands this, right? We don't need to understand, you know, uh, whatever, you know, the high level. But you see, at, at all levels, we understand we're supposed to be humble. And that is meritorious. Yeah, I got that. Huh? I got that. And uh, outside, you practice being reverent. So... 
uh, the uh, immediately uh, the Koreans uh, in the audience in the assembly. Oh yeah, we are. We have virtue, <laughs> right? You see, it's very very clever. Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, self nature, the self nature establishing a ten thousand dharmas merit and the mind substance separate from thought is virtue. Okay. Okay, so he says, uh, he says, uh, uh, the self nature, okay, can yeah, establish, can create the 10,000 dharmas. So everything arises from the self nature, okay, and that is merit. And, and the mind substance separate from thought uh, is virtue. Uh, to be virtuous is not to think. Hmm? I don't know either. I don't understand either. Don't look at me. 25. Yeah. Not being apart from a self nature is merit. And its use in accord with conditions without defilements is virtue. 不离自信是功, okay, 25. Uh, uh, okay, this uh, do you have forget it and just strike it out. We don't care what they do. Okay. It's not even worth mentioning. Okay. Hmm. What we do is have nothing to do with, with whatever they do. Okay? Yeah, forget it. Okay. Very good. And that just came, the comment came at a time where I deferred to them and said, you are the standard, and therefore I'm going to follow your, 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 your you know, uh, your guidelines. No more. None of, your, none of my business what they do. Uh, not being apart from the self nature's merit, mm. meaning that uh, meaning that these bodhisattvas, yeah, is, uh, yeah. and 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 it makes me wonder he, the, the 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 way that Master Huineng explained it for at the level of bodhisattva, mahasattva, not just bodhisattva, <laughs> but he's talking about level of mahasattva, uh, and. And uh, what does it have to do with uh, Emperor Wu of uh, the Yang of the Yang Dynasty? Okay, there's a connection there uh, in Master Huineng's mind. Okay, that's how profound it is. Okay. Not being part of the self nature's merit, you always are uh, connected to the self nature. Okay, that's merit. And using the self nature to accord with conditions, meaning you don't force yourself on others. Okay, uh, you do not impose your will on others, boys and girls. Okay, I train you to develop samadhi power, and the one rule of thumb is that you never impose your will on others. Because if you do that, you violate this. You are not a virtuous person. It's a very unvirtuous act to beat up on others in order to get your way. How dare you? You like that, I will not teach you. Better not forget it. So, if it's con if favorable, we do. If not favorable, we stop. We wait. We don't force our way. Okay, uh, without defilement is virtue. Okay, twenty-seven. 
If you seek the merit and virtue of Dharma body, simply act accordingly, for this is true merit and virtue. 若密功德法身,但依此作,是真功德. Okay, uh, so the Master said, if you are interested in uh, the true merit and virtue of the Dharma body of yours, okay, then act like I just told you, in humility, uh, out of reverence, Act according to act accordingly, meaning that do the best you can. Follow my guidelines I gave you earlier. Okay? Follow it accordingly to your best abilities. That will help you create merit and virtue. Isn't that interesting? We want to know exactly what to do, but he says, try your best. That's the answer. No compromise. Hmm? Oh, that's all you have. Try your best. 29. Those who cultivate merit and virtue in their hearts do not slight others, but always universally respect them. Those who constantly slight others and do not cut off the me and mine are without merit. 若修功德之人,心急不清,常行普静,心常亲人,无我不断,即自无功. Okay, now, it's not understanding. He says, these are the conducts, the rules of conducts of my disciples. Yes, William Mountain. Thank you, Master. Thank you for the instruction not to impose our will on others. Forgive me, it may be the first time I'm hearing you say it so directly. And I'm, I'm wondering, can you speak a little bit more about that instruction? Uh, how can I be sensitive so that I'm not doing that? I'm referring to the fact that I uh, teach you Chan and help and, and put a lot of emphasis on you in developing your samadhi power so that you are higher level in samadhi than others. My rule of thumb is that you come to me, uh, you should at least shoot for having higher samadhi level than you and your, your teacher. That includes me too. <laughs> okay. And my point here is that I put a lot of emphasis since day one that uh, to to avoid wasting your time and mine, that we should have clear goals on why we're doing this. And to me, one thing that everyone can find very beneficial is to increase their samadhi level. That's concrete, because once you're, you reach a certain samadhi level uh, in the future, in your future lives, is it's uh, your base. It's very easy for you to reach it again. Whereas, uh, if your goal in life is to make money and make a fortune, like Elon Musk, the fortune fluctuates. You know? <laughs> he lost like so much money recently. <laughs> He's no longer the richest man on, in the world. <laughs> you see? And that's the nature of these uh, these worldly things. When you practice samadhi and you build your samadhi uh, power, it's always there for you, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. It's a, it's a great, great asset to have. And because of the emphasis, uh, I try my best 
to help a lot of people progress very quickly. And I develop ways to teach you and help you improve. Okay, all sorts of people. And, uh, and I noticed that uh, people are becoming stronger and stronger and, and uh, new people come and uh, then the older timers of the people who are stronger um, uh, have disagreements and then uh, they uh, feel that it's okay to impose a will on others. Okay, and because what happened is that when you go into a fight with someone who has stronger level of samadhi than you, and you butt heads, and if, if he or she is stronger than you, you're going to get hurt. And that's counter to our objective in helping you develop samadhi power so that you impose your will on others. You steamroll others. So that, so that here on slide 29, uh, you have not cut off the me in the mind. I am going to have my way. If you do that, uh, you're harming others and you are not developing wisdom and virtue. Does it help? And therefore, when I see people do that, I immediately, uh, I tell you, I chopped, I chopped them down by the knees immediately. I said, you, you continue, I will cut you down, I will cut you down. Now you forewarned, explicitly. You cannot impose your will on others. A yes, too. As, as a parent, um, what's the best way to deal with kids um, when they disagree with you? When they, dis when they disagree with us, they're entitled to disagree with us because it's, uh, yes, they are their own being up to the point where they're going to get hurt. They're going to hurt themselves. That's when, that's when we intervene. But we cannot. We cannot simply say, this is my way or the highway. We have to bend with them. You have to deal, we have to be with them and accord with them until they get hurt. And then we say, uh-uh, no, 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 you don't do this. Or you let them get hurt a little bit, and they say, see, I warn you, you better stop now, okay? And that happens. But you don't say, uh-uh, it's going to be my way. Okay. That's totally unacceptable. Way mountain. Andi 是上菩萨的一样的，做了好多帮着别人的，没有不用不希望违法。他就是功德了，对不对？阿弥陀佛，讲完了。It's is not. Uh, can you translate into English, or you you know? Go ahead. Okay, let me try. Um, first question is uh, um, not being neither uh, good or evil. Is that uh, our self nature? Did he say that in Chinese? Did he? Yeah, hỏi nói tiếng Việt ha. Thì nếu mà mình cách sự tính của mình á là mình suy nghĩ mình có hiền không phải hiền 
có không phải ác thế là mình không có giết người cũng không có phụ người tức là sư tính của mình phải không anh xin hỏi à, sư phụ à, ở số 1 còn câu số ai đó là sư phụ đã phủ tất cả nhiều người nhiều người đó là không có cần quỷ báo không có mời người, người trả lời vậy đó đó là cung tất đúng không dạ nam mô đạo phật dạ xin cảm ơn sư phụ đã nói xong rồi Okay, let the Vietnamese translate now. <laughs> Master, I almost missed the second half, <laughs> almost the other half. So I just recognized that he said, um, we don't think of good and we don't think of evil. Um, is that the middle is that the middle way or is that the true nature but i missed the, the whole the rest of the part i'm sorry okay what is he's, uh, he's, uh, he's saying is that uh, if you don't think of good you don't think of evil is that your self nature okay the answer is no it's not the self nature the way he puts it, okay? Uh, the answer for him in particular is stop using that, stop thinking about that, you're in the wrong tracks. I'm gonna explain it to you, okay? Just know that you're on the wrong track. Uh, yes, uh, nine. Uh, one comment, the here the wu wo bu duan, I would just translate into me, 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 like the master, the way master says it. <laughs> I think essentially that's what the six patriarch was saying. Just me, 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 me. Anyway, that's a comment. Uh, a question is, uh, so in this original dialogue, the Mary and the virtual, uh, is the question, right? Like, uh, that's what Emperor Liang was asking, and the blessings was put in a lower position as oppositing the merits and virtual. But then the way Master teaches us is always emphasizing on blessings, like creating blessings, plan blessings. So I'm just wondering if Master, wh why Master never teaches us teaches us or mentions uh, creating merits and the virtues, like the way Emperor Liang talks about it. Because I'm not Chinese. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Can I do it my way? Uh, but then for the Chinese in this context, blessing, blessings seem not something that good. Like it's good, but it's not that good, right? Because that's on, the only thing Emperor Liang created is blessings. But we no, all no, think, no, oh, no, create it's blessings. Different, great. different kind of blessings. Huh? The blessings that Emperor Liang, uh, Emperor Wu uh, created is different from the blessings I'm teaching you. It's totally different. Could you elaborate? No. <laughs> <laughs> We all must have our secrets. Yeah. So, for example, the blessings that Master Xinhua did not explain to them, to his disciples, my generation, I was not a recipient of that lesson or that opportunity. But he gave his students the opportunity to create blessings. I saw that. I did not have that opportunity. That's what I'm referring to. It's different from the blessings that Emperor Liang was doing. It's different from uh, what, what, uh, uh, what uh, these people are, are understand. Same thing. The blessing I'm referring to, okay, uh, have many more aspects than Master Shenhua blessings, but that also include the blessings that he uh, made available to his disciples. My blessings have more 
aspects. Because my blessings in the context of Fu Tian, few blessings. That's exactly what Master Shen are as well. Okay? Uh, but we are more embracing. All right, so go, uh, going back to the gentleman's uh, comment, uh, I'm, oh, he's gone already? I don't need to explain to him then? Okay, fine, we drop it. Right? He's gone, right? No, he went downstairs to eat something. Uh, yeah, but I think he's listening from downstairs. He can hear, okay. he can uh, hear you. The reason I don't want to explain to him too much is because is because uh, he's trying to understand. He's uh, read a lot of uh, sutras and uh, loved to read sutras and read uh, a lot of Buddhist books and uh, scriptures. And exactly that's what weighed him down because he knows too much and he's trying to synthesize that with uh, this teaching here. And that's what's causing him problems. Uh, is not going to help him. It's going to make it worse for him, actually. Uh, so that's why uh, the way I, I teach him is different. I just say, no, don't do it. Drop it. That's all. Uh, and similarly, the second part is that he says, uh, uh, I help a lot of people, and uh, I don't leave any mark of helping people. Uh, is that uh, is that is that uh, merit and virtue? First, he asked about the uh, the self nature. Is that not thinking about good, thinking about evil? That's a reference to the Huato. Mm, Huato says, before you think of good, before you think of evil, what is your original face? So that's a reference to that. Okay, uh, and. And so uh, he's trying to understand. That's why I said, no, you're going the wrong way. You, you, you're doing it wrong. And that's not worth for me to elaborate for you because the more I explain to you, the more you want to understand. Okay? It's not something that I care to go into because it's the wrong, uh, it's the wrong path for you. It's not worth wait, uh, spending time on it. And the second question is, uh, if you have no mark, is that uh, merit and virtue you help, you don't want people to know? Uh, yes and no. Yes in general for low-level people, but no is not in the context here that Master Hui Neng is talking about. Okay? Uh, again, he still missed the point. The point here is that it's not for him to understand. Here, uh, it's Better not understand this and just and just shelve it, memorize it. That's all. That's all. You, that's all you can do. It's way too much for you. Okay. Uh, uh, question from JC. 한국 유튜브에 올라온 질문입니다. 성봉 질문입니다. 스승님, 궁금한 점이 생겨서 질문드립니다. 생각을 하지 않음이 공덕과 관련이 있다고 하셨는데 예전 영화선사님의 서적에서 선정에 들면 그 자체로 복을 쌓는다고 하셨던 게 생각이 났습니다. 혹시 이와 상관이 있습니까? Uh, this question is from Song Bong from YouTube. I have one, one thing I want to ask you. Um, no thought is better than virtue. And in the, uh, in the past lecture, you mentioned that if we are in Samadhi, that is blessing. Is it related with this thing? No, it's much lower level. 
What I taught you along those lines are designed to help you develop samadhi power. Uh, this, what he's referring to, is a certain teaching which is, uh, has to do with, uh, with uh, advanced level practitioners. Okay? Uh, and he, he threw in a few things here and there to help us, uh, uh, to help translate it for us into actions instead of concepts. Okay? Uh, so, uh, no, it's different. Uh, you cannot, I mean, my teaching to you is much lower level. It's because it's you as far as low level. What he's teaching here is very, very high level. Okay. Um, so he says here, uh, even those, those who are at a high level, and this is very appropriate, uh, those who have, uh, uh, who are high level, do not slight others. Okay? I've seen so many enlightened bodhisattvas slight others. He says, you're not good. Okay? Uh, and that's, that's not, that's not becoming of them to do that. The Master says so. Uh, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattvas, the bodhis Bodhisattva path we are on, okay, whether you're high level or low level, okay, you should not try to slight others in your heart. It's not about what you say outside. You understand here, he's saying, uh, you know, what, what sometimes, for example, Master Shenhua yells at you and says, you idiot, you stupid, and you and so forth. Stupid, that's what he, he's known to do, right? Stupid, okay. Uh, outside is the harsh words, but inside the heart, you see, in their hearts is the key here. He's not sliding them at all, he's teaching them. Is it clear? This is a distinction you need to be careful about. Xin ji bu ching, meaning in your, in your mind, you don't intend to slight people at all. It's not about what you say or the words you utter or, or how you, people perceive you. It's not relevant. It's about what's inside of you. Do you intend to Slight people, do you intend to impose your will on others to get your way? That's not acceptable. Okay? So, in the hearts, okay, if you have merit and virtue, you do something meritorious and virtuous, you never try to slight others. All right? Number one. Number two, not just that. You don't simply not just slide. You also are respectful towards all. Just because they're poor, you don't you are not disrespectful towards them. Just because they're stupid, you are not disrespectful towards them. Just because they're evil, you're not disrespectful towards them. You respect What do I say? Someone You expect something. Very good. <laughs> but that one thing? <laughs> what thing again? You always respect. Uh, what did I say? I, uh, you see, I told you as soon as I said, I forgot. Can somebody play back what I said? But no one was paying attention. Hmm? Not just people. Not just living beings. Hmm. 
That very good, you got that far. Very good. Uh, respect universal here refers to respect like the Japanese. You know what they do? I find it disgusting, <laughs> personally. And they say, that Marie Kondo, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Marie Kondo, anyone is Marie Kondo uh, a disciple? I'm the only one? <laughs> anyone Marie Kondo disciple? Huh? Okay, Marie Kondo is a famous uh, Japanese lady who makes uh, uh, her name on uh, helping people organize their closets. <laughs> okay, and she says she would go to people's home, there's a lot of junk in their closets. She said, okay, let's take out the clothes here, put them in piles. Okay, I watch those shows. Okay, 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 I admit to you. <laughs> Let it be known, okay? Go ahead and slide me. <laughs> and, and so she put this pile, saying, she says, okay, uh, this pile here we're going to keep. Okay, basically the concept is pile here we're going to keep. So she would take out, tell the owner, the, 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 uh, the uh, homeowner, say, let me show you how. Take out this cloth here, okay? You put it down, and you bow to it and say, I thank you for your service. <laughs> and that's universal respect, my boy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 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 I, by same exact reaction. I said, say what? <laughs> and, and what's amazing to me is that her customers are actually like Peter, white-faced. <laughs> and they did it. Yeah, they both. <laughs> I, I, I was so shocked. I said, I said, the instruction, you bow to the closer. And then the, the, the pale-faced woman actually bowed. <laughs> it's on TV, what do you expect? You know, they got five, ten thousand dollars yeah. there. But that's respect universally. It is true. That's what he's talking about, folks. You laughing, Marie Kondo. <laughs> you are so ignorant. <laughs> you have no universal respect. Because Xiao Tai, respect universally here refers to not just living beings, but also insentient beings. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yes, Red. Uh, seven. Hi, Master. You said about respecting evil. For example, Putin. How do we respect him? Putin? Very carefully. <laughs> He's known to kill his... Uh... <laughs> I'm respectful. I would never slide you. <laughs> but you better respect him. Uh, next question. <laughs> uh, you respect them for who they are. You may not agree with them, but you still give them the respect they deserve for who they are. Okay? Uh, the fact of the matter is that this, we may disagree with them, but they have their own re reasons for doing things. Uh, they have these, you know, even like Putin or Rasputin or Stalin and so forth. Those people, they actually have ideals, folks. 
The way they go about implementing the ideals is kind of uh, sucks, stinks, but they do have ideals, and that's what we're referring to. You respect them for what is worthy to be respected. You still respect them, even if you disagree with them. That's what he's referring to. Okay? All right, uh, Way Mountain. Thank you, Master. I, I had a curious question. Uh, can bodhisattvas quarrel with one another, or, dis or do they just disagree with one another? Or do they ever disagree with each other? Never. Bodhisattvas always see the eye to eye, and they quarrel, but, you know, a little bit. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, why do you ask? Where are you going? Uh, hang on. Uh, turn on number you one. You said that um, uh, Master Hainung said something about s sliding. I, I thought that was referring to uh, bodhisattvas. I, I don't know, maybe I misunderstood. Uh, no, no. It refers to, uh, to everyone. Bodhisattvas do uh, slight others. In their hearts. <laughs> that's why, that's why he said so. He says, he would not say this unless that's the case. You don't understand. You think that he sits here, he, in the, he sits on the chair, and he says, you don't, you know, you don't slight others. Uh, if you want to create merit and virtue, you don't slight others. What it has to do with us? We can't connect with us because it's not for us. It's for <laughs> the people in the audience that don't you dare beat up on people. Don't you dare impose your will on others. You understand? It's not for, it's not for us. It's for those people. The Bodhisattva is there and says, hey, you know, you know he, he has a lot of disciples who are at different levels, okay? Different levels of cultivation, level of fruition. Peter, fruition of fruits and vegetables, okay? And therefore, these Bodhisattvas really you know, have slight in their heart. That's why he said, you don't slight others, you hear? You understand? That's why, because it doesn't make sense to go into merit and virtue. All of a sudden, you talk about sliding and, you know, and universally respect people and so forth. And Marie Kondo. Okay? You have to understand, you know, these, these teachers, they speak because of the, the students in attendance. He's trying to teach them. Uh, JMT. Uh,投글수행하는것이손해를감수하는것이라고하셨고,呃,오늘의질문은,呃,제가손해라는판단이들어서,그러니까손해를선택했는데,呃,시간이지나가보니까오히려더큰이득이되더라고요그래서제가인
그러니까 손해를 선택했으면 손해를 봐야 되는데 손해가 이득이 돼서 제가 손해를 잘 감수하고 있는 것인지를 질문 드렸습니다. I choose to take loss because I think it's my loss. But as time goes by, it become benefit to me. Then do I implement your instruction? Yeah, you're doing it right. That's exactly. You take a loss. You keep on taking losses and losses and losses. Okay, and you know, eventually you notice you're gaining. All right, that's normal. But, but, you should not rejoice that you're gaining. That's your problem. Next. Because you enjoy it. You say, oh, Master is right. By taking losses, I'm gaining. Oh, whoa, let's take more losses. No. You take losses because you're supposed to take losses. And if you see gains, ah, it doesn't matter. You get that? You're on the right track, kid. I mean, woman. I mean. <laughs> okay. So far, so good. Uh, you too. Go ahead. Um, Master, just a question. Marie Kondo, she will bow to the items. But if it doesn't spark joy, she either trashes it or donates it. Shocking. Okay. So we have another person who watches Marie Kondo. <laughs> and you ever wonder what we do at the temple? Could you, you know, we, we need to have a talk. <laughs> okay, going back to slide 30. Mm. Those who constantly slight others, okay, and do, and do not cut off, uh, 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 okay, uh, you're right, the translation is not correct. Meaning that uh, those who constantly slight others and uh, only see themselves. Does it make sense to you in English? Pale faced people can only see themselves. Does it make sense or not? It says here, wu wo, meaning me, me. It's, it's always me. Okay, but you, can, you say that, uh, people would, the, uh, the pale faced people would laugh at us. It says, Chinglish. Okay, Kringlish. Okay, so we need to have something that express that concept where it's always me, 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 me. Everything is about me, 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 me. Okay? Me taking losses, me gaining, and me taking more losses in order to me gaining. Okay? But it's okay. Uh, one step at a time. So, how do you say that? Me, 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 non stop. Egocentric, no, no, this is a lot more stress. It stresses uh, just me and me incessantly. Okay, so uh, Wei Mountain. Oh, thank you, Master. Uh, you said always respect evil people and non sentinel living beings. So then, do we respect demons and ghosts as well? Yes, absolutely. You better respect demons and ghosts. They have their place in the universe. They're there for a reason. Then how? Just like a Putin. Putin, you know, he is there for a reason. 
That's like snakes are there for a reason. How do we uh, respect them by offering then? Or we respect them by staying away from them. <laughs> you respect the evil. I said, okay, you do evil. I, I'm going to keep my distance to show my respect. Okay? That's respect. Going near them would be stupid. Okay? I respect demons by running away from them. So, if you have many girls or depression girls harassing you, you just don't do anything? You can't get away with with them. How do you respect them? How do you express respect for them? Just leave them alone? No. It's Why are they there? With the Why are they there? Because you karmic, owe them. Karmic, yeah, obstruction, okay. You owe them. So how do you pay respect to them? By suffering. Okay, how else? Maybe a plaque or a compassion mantra. Paying off, paying them off. I owe you, therefore, out of respect, I will pay you. I will not fight you. Okay? If you're respectful, you'll find ways to express your respect. That's what he's talking about. It's, it's so many ways. It's about each of you decided how you're going to show your respect. But inside your heart, you don't slight them. You don't think about you constantly. Okay? Uh, you always respect. Okay? And if you're respectful in your heart, it will translate into, the, into actions. You do things that are respectful, naturally. But if you're not respectful, it doesn't matter. You will do things that are disrespectful, naturally. Okay? Hmm. And so he reminded us, those who constantly slight others, who, okay, uh, uh, and do not, Cut off, uh, and and uh, uh, can only see uh, themselves. Okay, if you cannot give me a better translation, come on, Peter. Now it's time to go to work to get the fruits and vegetables. Mary Jo, why, why are you so quiet? Yes, one. I was thinking either of self-interest or self-promoting. No, this is, his, his language is very, very personal. Ooh, Buddha one here, he says, I look at you, say you, you, you only think of me, 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 me. That's why he said, it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, a, um, a, um, a judgment. I say, I look at you, you always think of me, 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 me. That's why I said, that's why he says, you can only see yourself. You cannot see anything else. You are the center of the universe, but that's uh, too American. Okay, you see that this this is this is a, this is a it's a it's a it's a it's a it is a personal admonition because this has nothing to do with merit and virtue. In general, if you want to merit and virtue, go to the Chinese thing, okay? But he says, in my, in my assembly, there one particular bodhisattva who's pretty good, but he's going the wrong direction because, okay, because 
He only sees. I see it. I see it in, uh, in, in many enlightened people. They slight others and say, you, they are not good enough. That's why I hear from them. That one, that Bodhisattva there, that enlightened person is not good enough for me. Okay? Because in the heart it says, I'm better. And it shows. I talked to them for about half an hour, I got bored immediately. Because they keep on going back to me, 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 me. Okay? Uh, so uh, they really, they really judge others, say, no, no, that, 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 that monk there is no good, that nun there is no good. Okay? They are not respectful at all. They lack virtue. They are right, but they lack virtue. There's a big difference here. They're not wrong. Just because you're right doesn't mean you have merit and virtue, folks. You too. From WMT Daniel, how do you, re how do you respect a nuclear weapon? I let you figure it out. Uh, if you really want to respect it, eventually you figure it out. Okay, and so, so that's why, way mountain question. Oh, th thank you, Master. Um, at, at your request, along the lines of a Western version of me, 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 um, there's a Shakespearean quote that I wanted to share. Uh, it's Hamlet, and he says in a very famous line, Oh God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. And it makes me think of exactly what you're saying, that you're trapped in your own ego thinking you're king of everything, but yet see so little and aware of so little. How Shakespearean. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he speaks in riddles. Huh? <laughs> it's perfectly clear to him, don't slide him, okay? <laughs> Have more respect, please. <laughs> it's, you're in a nutshell, right? So just to spell it out, if I may, you're in a nutshell, like the smallest possible thing, right? Like so tiny, you're inside of it, but yet you think you're king of infinite space. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that that's what we're talking about? Yeah, it helps. it helps. No, 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 it's not just that. It's just that. It's, not, uh, it's, it's just that. It's not about space, it's about the mind here. The mind says, the mind is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, the mind only sees himself. Everything is through the lens of me. I like you, I don't like you. I, you know, beneficial for me is, is not good for me. You know, it's all me, 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 me. And that's what he's referring to. Yes, seven. Ma but Master, they're bodhisattvas. They don't have any egos. They're still thinking about themselves, like center of the universe. Honey, if you know what I know. <laughs> 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 you may say, say what? <laughs> if you've seen what I've seen. <laughs> okay, okay. You heard what I heard. It's shocking to me, too. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so he says, uh, he, 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 uh, he showed that, you know, the people who constantly slight others uh, and can only think uh, uh, of themselves, Oh, 
are without merit, meaning that if you don't you you don't think much of others and always put yourself above everyone else, then everything you do is of no value. It's so damaging, especially if you're a bodhisattva, and that's all you do. Okay? So, uh, can we change it just as to can only see themselves for now? I hope that may, maybe in the future we get a better expression. Okay. Okay, time is up, folks. Thank you so much. Any final questions? It's a tough... It's a tough sutra, isn't it? This part uh, is very, very tough. And uh, I'm glad that we are able to uh, got, get this far. 30 slides, that's, uh, <laughs> you guys are tough. Uh. Okay, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah.